I thought you weren't going to get him. <laughs> the hell? She said you weren't going to get him, Mama. Hello? Hello. Hello, Rabbi. How can you hear me? It's Ava. I can hear you Anthony. now. How are you, Ava? It's Anthony. How are you? Hello, Anthony. Hello, Ava. I see that Yoram joining us and also Gabriel joining us. Let's just give another few minutes for people just to join us. Obviously, it's day supper. And then we're going to start the show by Zrat Hashem. Okay, so but is Marky joining us? Let me admit, Mark. Mark is joining us. I see. Okay, who else? Let's see who else coming. Hello, Mark. Hi, Rob. How are you? Baruch Hashem and you. You feeling better? Yeah. So getting there, getting laat laat. No, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Okay, so I see that Brining joining us. Let's give the people a few minutes more just to join. I especially made it earlier, so I don't want people to kill the uh, inverter, whatever is it. Whatever the site really. Okay, so let's start the show. Bezrat Hashem, now seven minutes clear. Sorry. Okay, let's start the show. Bezrat Hashem, now seven at I'm going to mute everyone. I don't know if Jeffrey with us, but just in case, Mark, if Jeffrey not with us, would you mind uh, reading for us? No problem, bro. Okay, no problem. are you ready? Are you no, there? No, I'm not ready. Okay. I must get my humash. Okay, get your humash. I'm muting everyone. Okay, Rabotai, I would like to delegate the show. In a soul of Esther Kaden Bat Ketia, Mordechai Ben Rahma, Harav Avram Haim Ben Eliezer Yaakov, Tamar Bat Zeava Yaakov, Salomon Ben Farhat, Bora Rut Bat Bela Shosha Blima, Bat Mordechai Betzalel, Malka Bat Regina, Veketi Gurgia Bat Farhan Shmatam Tiet, Rura Betsura Haim. Also, I would like to delegate the Shaur in health of Menashe Naji Ben Farha, Leora Bat Miriam, Harav Moshe Ben Bahia Batia, Harav Moshe Ben Devora. הרב אברהם בן מרימה, הרב שלמה יהודה בן דליה, דבורה בת אסתר, אורנה בלומה בת מרים, שיינה קיילה בת חנה, מרדכי דוד בן לאה, חיים נחום בן פסע רזע, שמואל בן מיכל, ברוך בן שרה, צבי בן חווה, שמואל מאיר בן שושה בלימה, ומרים בת ג'לדה ליבה, משה אברהם בן חנה ריבה חיה ציפורה בת רחל, היה לה עדן בת רבקה, וטוב אליבה בת רחל, ויהושע חיים בן חיה לאה. פליז גאד רפואה שלמה קודם, ולכל פצועי עמו בית ישראל בכל מקום שהם. רבותיי, this week we're going to read two פרשיות. Yes, Mark? Sorry, uh, can you add חיים um, פנחס בן יהודית? חיים פנחס בן יהודית. אוקיי, לרפואה חיים פנחס בן יהודית. אוקיי. We are going to read this Shabbos two parashiot, Parashat Behar and Parashat Behukotai. Let's see what's happening in the beginning of Parashat Behar. Parashat Behar, at the beginning. Vaidaber Adonai el Moshe Behar Sinai le'emor. Just the first verse, Mark. Hashem spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai saying. Okay. What does it mean? Akadosh Baruch Hu spoke to Moshe and Mount Sinai to say, to say what? So we need to look at Rashi. Rashi HaKadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki, he born in the city of Troa. Troa is a city in the north of France and said the, the, the Mepharshim like this, he born around 980, uh, 989, yeah, 989 years ago. 
And he bring actually the Midrash that called Midrash Kohanim. What does it mean, Midrash Torah Kohanim? It's an explanation on a book of Sefer Vayikra. It's a commentary on Sefer Vayikra that explains. And he, he asked a question. Listen what he said. My Nian Shmita Itzel Har Sinai, Vehalo Kola Mitzvot Neemru Misinai. Say, the Rashi Akadosh. We know that when Bnei Israel receive the Torah in Mount Sinai, they receive all the law. They receive all the law, all the halachot, everything on Mount Sinai. Include the law of Shemitah. So what is the connection between mitzvah Shemitah to Mount Sinai? What's the question? So we have to understand what is the connection between mitzvah Shemitah to Mount Sinai. Because here the Torah going to the beginning of Parashat Behar speak about the mitzvah of Shemitah. Shemitah come every seven years. Come the Zerah Shimshon. Zerah Shimshon is Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nahmani. He born in a city of Modena in the north of Italy 317 years ago. He was a great Kabbalistic rabbi. And he wrote the book Zerah Shimshon. <laughs> In verse one, in Ot Aleph, listen what he says. He says something very interesting. And he said, by the way, it's not only him, it's many more Mefarshim ask the same question. What is the connection between Mount Sinai, that Shnata Shmita? If you're telling me that all the law that Bene Israel received on Mount Sinai, they obviously they received the law of Shmita. So why is the Torah here tell us that Shnata Shmita, the law of the Shmita comes specially, okay, and connected to Mount Sinai? Say the Zera Shimshon something extraordinary. The Zera Shimshon actually bring the Midrash Shmot Rabbah. He bring the Gemara in Masechet Eruvim Nun Dalet Amud Alef, that means 54 folio one, and also the Zohar Akadosh he bring. And he said like this, he said that when Bene Israel stood on Mount Sinai, okay, Hayalaim Herut mi Malach Amavet, Herut mi Sheabud Malchuyot. I will explain. When Bene Israel received the Torah on Mount Sinai, they, they, they come back to the day that Adam HaRishon being created. That mean, after Adam HaRishon eaten from the tree of knowledge, HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought the death into the world. When Bnei Israel received the Torah on Mount Sinai, listen to that, HaKadosh Baruch Hu canceled the death in the world. That mean that the angel of death have no more control over human being. Okay, until they, we know that they done the golden calf, we sin with the golden calf, we explain that, who actually made the golden calf, but it's not for now. Then Akadosh Baruch Hu took that immortality from human being. That means people after a certain age, each one according to what Akadosh Baruch Hu give him, they will die. Said the Zera Shimshon, B'nai Israel, as long as they kept the Shemitah year, they never have problem. As long that Bnei Israel kept the Shemitah year, okay, they didn't have to go to exile. At the moment that the children of Israel didn't keep Shnata Shemitah, what's happened to the children of Israel? We know just before the destruction of the first temple, the children of Israel gone, lo alenu to exile. We're still in exile. So say like this. Say the Zera Shimshon, you learn something extraordinary. I'll explain to you what's the connection between Har Sinai to Shnata Shemitah. What's connecting them together? He said that Ben Ezra, when they received the Torah, they have freedom from Allah Hamavit, freedom from Shabud Malchuyot. What it means, Shabud Malchuyot? That no other nation can tell the Jewish people what to do. And the moment that they sin with the golden calf, all of that return. That's according to the Zohar, Masege Gemara, Masechet Eruvim, not only Masechet Eruvim, also the Midrash in Shemot Rabbah. Said the Zerah Shimshon, the same, 
applicable to what? To Shnat Hashmita. The children of Israel didn't have to go to exile, okay? Didn't have Shabud Malchuyot as long that they kept Shnat Hashmita. And the moment that they didn't keep the Shmita yet, they didn't keep Shmita anymore, what happened? Immediately they go into exile. And he said, that's the connection. That means that Mount Sinai and the Shemitah year, it's a special protection to the Jewish people, said the Zerah Shem Shon. He said, and that's what Rashi tried to tell you, that they both, what is the connection between Mount Sinai to Shnata Shmita? The protection that Shnata Shmita give you. I saw another commentary of the Gaon Hida. The Gaon Hida is Rabbi Haim Yosef David Azulai. He born in Jerusalem 299 years ago. And he said like this, he said, why did we receive Shnata Shmita? What's hiding? What is the secret behind Shnata Shmita? And he explained like this, said the Gaon Hida, that all year, the children of Israel, people, not only the children of Israel, everyone busy working, people busy with their field, busy people busy with their business. They don't really have time, okay, to sit and study Torah. The Shnata Shemitah come to tell you that that year you don't allow to work on a field. Why after the field? Because at that day, day time, the field was the main business. He said that it's come to tell you something very important. For six years, you're busy working. Come a Kadosh Baru and say, I want you to spend some time, okay, studying Torah. I'm gonna to give you the Shnata Shmita, the year, the seven year, that you're not allowed to harvest, you're not allowed to work the field, you're not allowed to do nothing in the ground. That year, you're gonna study only Torah. And I guarantee you that you live in love, prosperity, for three years. And said the Gaon Hida, this is the secret to implant on us the emuna in Akadosh Baruch Hu, that Parnasa, prosperity, is out from heaven. Akadosh Baruch Hu is in charge. Nahon, that we obligated to have, each one of us must do his own personal effort. But you mustn't take it and make from it like you worship it. Say that from here, Shnata Shmita come to implant on a human being that prosperity is from Akadosh Baruch Hu. Nahon, you have to do your personal effort, but you have to learn that Parnasa is from Akadosh Baruch Hu. Let's move. I'm going to skip because we're going to read two parshiot. Uh, I'm going to skip to verse 10. Listen what it says in verse 10. And it says like this. Vekidashtem. Okay. You shall sanctify the 50th year and proclaim freedom throughout the land for all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee year for you. You shall return each man to his ancestral heritage and you shall return each man to his family. Okay, what is the Yovel? I will explain it shortly and then I will go into the verse. The Torah tells us that Shnata Yovel, it's the 50th years. How did they calculate the 50th years? From the time that Bnei Israel entered the land of Eretz Israel after 40 years in the wilderness, when they entered the land of Eretz Israel, they calculated 50 years. And that Rosh Hashanah on the 50th years, that considers Shnata Yovel, the beginning of the, the, the year, because on Rosh Hashanah. Okay? Then on the 50th years, what happened? The slave stopped working for 10 days to give him time to understand what is it, freedom. And after 10 days in Yom Kippurim, after the sound of the shofar, the slave going back to the where they live, to the house, each one going to their own place. The land returning back to the original owner. The houses, if people sold the houses, returning back to the original owner and etc. Okay, that's Shnata Yovel. By the way, Shnata Yovel stopped, stopped worked just before 
the, the destruction of the first temple, the destruction of the first temple. Okay, why? Because the it was two two and a half tribe that wasn't there. It was Shevet Gad, Shevet Reuven, and Hatzia Shevet uh, Binyamin. So just before the destruction Menashe. of Menashe. the first temple, sorry, Menashe is, is half, men, half the tribe of Menashe. Half the tribe of Menashe. No, Shevet Binyamin. Shevet Binyamin. Shevet Binyamin. Hatzia Shevet Binyamin. No. Are you sure? Oh, Hatsi, okay. Menashe. Hatsi Menashe. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, because Shevet Binyamin is in, in Yerushalayim. Okay, so what happened? They gone to exile. They left Eretz Israel. It said the Rambam that the Rambam that I'm referring is Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon. Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, born a city of Cordova in Spain around 800 in 88 years ago, plus minus. In his book, Mishneh Torah, in the law of Shemitah the Yovel, the law of Shemitah and Yovel, okay? In chapter 10, verse eight, he explained that only when the entire Jewish people living in the land of Eretz Israel, only then you can do the Shnata Yovel. And he explained that when the Mashiach come, okay? The Yovel gonna return. That means that the Yovel gonna say that the entire Jewish people all over the world will be in Israel. Many people ask how, and I ask myself how, until I saw the Zohar, Sha'atida Eretz Israel, Litrahev al Kola Olam. The land of Eretz Israel actually gonna extend and it's gonna be all over the world. And the city of Jerusalem gonna be the same size of the land of Eretz Israel. That's how the Zohar Kadosh explained. Okay, until now we explain about the Yovel. But look what it say here. Yovel hiti yelachem. That means that the Yovel year will be for all of you. Come the Rabbeinu Ovadia Misporno. Rabbeinu Ovadia Misporno born in Italy. He born around 553 years ago. In his profession, he was a doctor. He was a doctor. But he was a great scholar person and he wrote commentary on our holy Torah. Okay, and he asked a question. He said, I understand that when you tell the slave to go to free, that's ever divri, that you have to go to free, he's happy. But the master is gonna get upset. Why? Because there's no one else to do the jobs that the slave used to be. So how does it work? How did you say your velti elachem? Like everyone should be happy. Say the sporno something very important. The sporno say that this parsha speak a lot about the emuna, and the Torah here come to teach us something very important. Come to tell you, and though that the owner release the master release the slave, he should be happy because that's the command of Akadosh Baruch Hu. And if he believe on that mitzvah, that's mean that nothing harm going to happen to him. Although that is upset, who's going to do the dirty job? You say, the Sforno, here the Torah tell you, Shnata Yovel, okay? Yovel, hi lachem, lachem, it means for you as a master and for you as a slave that you're going to free. You must be happy and you must trust Hashem that if he tell you that they can go, he'll send you someone else to do the job. I saw another commentary that Hazal tell us in a Gemara in Masechet Sanhedrin. Hazal in a Gemara Masechet San, eh, sorry, Masechet Kedushin Kaf Bet Amud Alef, okay, 22 folio 1. Hazal say, Kol HaKone Eved Ivri Kekone Adon Le'atzmo. A person that take a Jewish slave is like having a master to himself. And Hazal there explains something very important. Hazal say in, um, in the Gemara, something interesting, that when a person take Eved Ivri, you have to pay for him to eat. You have to make sure that the same bed that he sleep, the Eved Ivri sleep. The same food that he eat, you have to give the slave. He doesn't have, he mustn't call him. He's not allowed to call him by the name slave, okay? He have to give him food. He have to give him drink. He have to give him place to sleep. Not only that, he have to look. If he have parents, he must look after his parents and etc. Come, 
בגאון רבי יונתן אייפשיץ. רבי יונתן אייפשיץ, בורן 333 years ago, in Krakow, in Poland, in city of Krakow. And he said from that that he said that Eved Ivri tiye lachem. He said that actually you know how the master gonna be happy. Because by that, that the masters who suddenly have to let the slave go, he's gonna be happy because he have too much expense to spend on a slave, on his family, to make sure that you treat him in a right way, the same like he treat himself. He said, therefore it say, Yovel tiye lachem lachem. It's not only for the slave, also for the master. How's the master become happy? By that, that he let everyone go, okay? That he doesn't have any more expense. That's how the Rabbi Yonatan Ayvshid explained that verse. In, let's jump to verse 23, because I want to jump after that to Parashat uh, Bechukotai. In verse 23, the Torah tell us something very interesting. The Torah tell us, והארץ לא תימכר לצמיתות, כי לי הארץ, כי גרים ותושבים אתם עמדי. Land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine, for you are sojourners and residents with me. Okay, what it mean? Okay, what does it mean, כי גרים ותושבים אתם עמדי? Okay, I saw a beautiful commentary of the Rabbi uh, Yaakov Baal Aturim. Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, born around 554 years ago in Germany. He was the son of the Rosh, Rabbeinu Asher, okay? And he said that from that, that it say, Gerim v'toshavim atem imadi, what it mean? You are Ger, is a foreigner, Toshavim is people that settle on the land with me. Say something extraordinary. Say Rabbi Yaakov Baal Aturim, from here you learn something extraordinary. He say, what Hazal telling us in a Gemara, Masechet Megillah, Kaftet Amud Aleph. Hazal tell us, Galu lebabel shkhina imahem. Okay? The Hazal tell us, when the children of Israel gone to exile to Babylon, okay, the divine spirit of the Almighty gone to exile with them. He say here there is a Hiddush that the Mepharshim say what the Torah tried to tell you. And he say like this, the Torah tried to tell you, even when the Jewish people are gonna go to exile, wherever place that they're gonna be, the Holy Spirit gonna be with them. And he said, this is a message for the future that HaKadosh Baruch Hu tried to tell you. Kigirim v'toshavim atem imadi, you like a foreigner and like a, a permanent resident with me. Wherever you're gonna go, it doesn't make a difference where you're gonna be with me. And I'm gonna be with you. If you're gonna go to America, I'll be in America with you. You in South Africa, you in Canada, you in Europe, you in Asia. Wherever there is Jew, the holy divine of HaKadosh Baruch Hu accompany us as a Jewish people. And that's a message to us to understand that wherever we are, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with us 24-7. Let's continue in Parashat Bechukotai. Marky, I'm jumping now to Parashat Bechukotai. You are the jumping. second parasha that we're going to read. <laughs> <laughs> if you will follow my decrees and observe my commandments and perform them. Okay, look here, it says in Bechukotai. Bechukotai is in plural. Why in plural? Why Berabim? Why in plural? Why not in singly Bechukotai, in Malo? It's a Bechukotai, in pure, why? So I saw a beautiful commentary that Hazal tell us, and Hazal explained that from here you learn something important, that here the Torah hinting of us about the written Torah and the oral Torah. That's mean, in Bechukotai telechu, that means if you keep my law and the pshat of the dvarim, what it means if you keep the pshat of the dvarim, I'm going to explain what it means, what it means to keep, to observe. 
C, C de Mefarshim, that here you have a hint that you obligate to learn the written Torah and the oral Torah, because without learning the oral Torah, how can you understand the written Torah, said the Mefarshim? So from here, we learn something extraordinary, said the Mefarshim. You learn from here that the oral Torah come already hinted to us when? When HaKadosh Baruch Hu wrote the written Torah. So if anyone want to understand where there is a hint to the oral Torah, in Behukotai Telechu, the word Behukotai, in plural, not in singly, because it should say, uh, it should say the Behuki in Malu. No, it doesn't say Behuki Telechu, Behukotai in plural. That means that you learn from here that there is two Torah that the person have to observe. Okay, I saw another commentary that it means <clears throat> in Behokotai Telechu. Okay, what it means in Behokotai Telechu, Be'et Mitzvotai Tishmeru. What it means Tishmeru to absorb. I saw a beautiful commentary that Hazal explained and, and uh, a thing that it's brought up by Rabbi Eliezer Askeri. Rabbi Elazar Askeri. Rabbi Elazar Askeri, he lived during the golden era in uh, Tzfat, okay, in the 16th century. He actually born in Tzfat. He born around 500, no, 484 years ago. No, yeah, 488, 488. He was plus minus the same age of the... Ariya Kadosh, if I'm not mistaken, Ken, Rabbeinu Ariya Kadosh. He wrote the book Baal Sefer Haredim. Sefer Haredim, it's a Musar book. And he said like this, he say that from that that the Torah tell us, it's mitzvotai tishmoru, that you should absorb my law, it's come to tell you that many of us, when it's come to learn Torah or come to daven, let's take davening. He said like this, he said, when it's come to davening, many people daven like a robot. They know that the fila of Baha, they davening, and a half of the time they sailing, you know, they flying, they, they in their business, they, they in New York, wherever they are, you know, everyone thinking about what he, what he thinking during the tefillah. He can say that from that, that the Torah tell us, at mitzvotai tishmeru, that you should absorb my mitzvot. It's not just to keep the mitzvot. It's not just to go and daven. It's not just to learn Torah. It's come to tell you when you learn Torah, put a lot of effort, learn with kavana. When you daven, daven with kavana, focus on your davening. See what's happening in your davening. What it means, see what's happening in your davening. See, make sure that you're not floating and thinking about something else, you're only focusing about you and Almighty. And that's what it say in Behokotai Telechu et Mitzvotai Tishmoru, that you should absorb the mitzvot and the law of Akadosh Baruch Hu. So that means that when you're learning Torah, when you're davening, you have to make sure that you're focusing on your davening, you're focusing on your studying, you're putting a lot of effort, okay, to your davening, you're putting a lot of emphasis, okay, about the mitzvot that you keep, the mitzvot that you do. Let's go to verse four, and here it says something very interesting. Look what it says. והשבדתי היה רעה מן הארץ, וחרב לא תעבור בארצכם. That's actually verse 5, isn't it, Rav? That's verse... Sorry, maybe I read the wrong... Sorry, sorry, I read the wrong one. ונתתי גשמכם בעיתם, ונתנה הארץ יבולה, ועץ השדה ייתן פריו. Sorry, my mistake. Then I will provide your rains in their time, and the land will give its produce, and the tree of the field will give its fruit. Now, I want you to look carefully that in Parashat Behukotai, there is a lot of mitzvot, 
הקדוש ברוך הוא עושה, if you observe my mitzvot, okay, he should reward us. And every mitzvah start with the word vav. ונתתי גשמכם, והשיג לכם. דייש, if you look at verse 6, ונתתי שלום, ורודפתם את אויביכם. You look that every ברוכה that הקדוש ברוך הוא given us, okay, if you look from, I'm just opening my homage here, from this, uh, where is it? Why am I not finding? Okay, here, yeah, that's it. If you look from verse 4 onwards, it's every word that HaKadosh Baruch Hu mentioned, the beginning of the Bocha starts with the letters Vav. And many of the Mepharshim ask, what's happening with that letters Vav? I saw a beautiful commentary of Rabbi Haim Ben Atar. Rabbi Haim Ben Atar born, as we explain, in the city of Sali in Morocco. Okay, he born around 327 years ago. Okay, and in his book, he explained something extraordinary. He said like this, he yeah. said the latest Vav, it's Vav Ahibu, come to connect. But it's come to tell you something very important. He said that when you keep mitzvot and you absorb whatever law that HaKadosh Baruch Hu command you, you may be gonna get rewards here. Many people think that they get rewards here. He said what you get here, it's only the bonus, it's not the main. He said the main salary, that means the main rewards that we're getting is for the world to come. And that's what it starts with the letters Vav. It says, Ve, everything, Venatati Gishmechem, Veisig Lachem, Daish, Et Batsir, okay? And then it says, Venatati Shalom Baaretz, Urdaftem et Oivechem. The word Vav comes to teach you that it's come to add up. What we're getting here in this world, what people get here, prosperity, health, wealth, whatever is it, nachas, uh, focus to study Torah, he say that's only to tell you one very important thing. That's what you're getting here, just the bonuses. But the real reward, where are you gonna get it? For the world to come. And the world to come, you're gonna get all of that rewards. And he said, that's the secret behind the letters Vav, that every brocha start with the letters Vav. That's Orahai Makadosh. So if we look at it, people can say, listen, what waiting for every Jew? And Hazal tell us, Israel, the Jewish people, Meli'im mitzvot karimon. They're full of mitzvot like a pomegranate. Why? Because Rabotai, a person wake up in the morning, Modeani, Deni Vas, Sher Kideshano be Mitzvotah ve Tzivano, An Netilat Yadan. He go to the toilet, Asher Yatsar. Then Birkot HaShahar, Shahari. The person eat, drink something, Brocha. Before you realize there's so many mitzvot we doing without even knowing. A person greeting someone, it's a mitzvah. A person go to work, it's a mitzvah. So say Hazal in the Gemara, Israel, Meli'im, Mitzvot, Karimon. What you're getting here in this world, it's just what we call it the bonus. But the real reward, what waiting for us for the world to come, Ein lo ra'ata. Her eyes never saw something like that. What's waiting to every Jew for the world to come. And that's, say, the Ora Haim Makadosh, Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, what it's come to teach you, the latest Vav come to teach you what's waiting for you for the world to come from all the mitzvot that you create. Let's move to verse 12. And here we see something very interesting. Here the Torah tell us, I will walk among you, I will be God unto you, and you will be a people unto me. Mm -hmm. Look what it say here. If you look at it, an upshot of the Dvarim, that I walk amongst you, and I will be a God to you, and then you're going to be a nation to me. 
That's an upshot of the dvarim, what the Torah tell us, but what's hiding behind it. I saw a beautiful commentary of Rabenu Ovadia mi Bartenura. Rabenu Ovadia mi Bartenura say that when a person walk from place to place, it's called to walk. To stand on a place, okay, to stand on one place. He say that here the Almighty promised us as Jewish people, okay, that the, the, the divine prosperity that's gonna come gonna be in different places with us. Say the whole, the, the Rabbi Vadia Mispon, what does it mean? Listen to that. He said that many people will think that the divine prosperity can be only in Bet Amikdash. Okay? The holy divine of the Almighty only in Bet Amikdash. Come, Rabbi Vadia Mispon, and tell us as long that there is tzaddikim in every generation, in every place in the world, in every place in the world, I repeat it, the divine of HaKadosh Baruch Hu will accompany him. Not only that, the prosperity divine from HaKadosh Baruch Hu that can come down to earth can be in every generation. As long that there is tzaddikim in that place. But I want to give you an example. If you look what's happened in, uh, in um, sorry, something dropped. What's happened in uh, Europe, there are certain places that the Jews was there, like Poland, okay? Poland, Ukraine, whatever you country that you look in Eastern Europe, okay? As long as the Jewish people was there, those places was full of prosperity. Today, that there is hardly Jews there, those places gone completely down. That means there is no brocha there, no brocha. When the Jewish people was in Egypt, they brought brocha to Egypt. The Jewish people gone to Rome, they brought brocha to Rome. The Jewish people gone to Babylon, full of prosperity. As the hachamim, the tzaddikim left those places, nothing left. That means the Zohar Kadosh say, that Lakhoit kol klipot. That means that they took all the shell, they took all the mitzvot that left when Adam Arishon, the Zohar Kadosh explained that he walked from place to place during 930 years of his life, okay? They managed to collect all of those holy divine spark that was in every country. And when they leave the country, the country go bankrupt. There's nothing in the country. He said the same happened, okay, where every Jews go. As long as the Jews keep moving and there is tzaddikim, I'll make sure that the prosperity, okay, and the holy divine will accompany you and will bring on you. How important is it, Rabotai, when we study Torah? How important is it? that we have tzaddikim in our generation, that we have to thank Sakadosh Baruch Hu, that plant them among us. I would like to conclude with verse 42. Verse 42 in Parashat Bechukotai, that's in, uh, in chapter 26, verse 42. Let me just get there. Yeah, I'm there. וזכרתי את בריתי אברהם, וזכרתי את בריתי יעקב, ואף את בריתי יצחק, ואף את בריתי אברהם אזכור, והארץ אשכור. Or remember my covenant, my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Avram. And I will remember, and I will, will I remember, and I will remember the land. Okay, so here there is two questions. Number one, <clears throat> if you look, the sequence should be first Abraham, then Yitzhak, then Yaakov. But the Torah say no, I will remember first Yaakov. Then it will remember Yitzhak. And last, Abraham, question number one. Why from the back to the front? Okay, and not 
from Avraham Avinu. Question number one. Question number two, what is the, all of those covenant that the Torah tell us have to do that Akadosh Baruch Hu will remember the covenant and he's going to remember the covenant of the earth, the land of Eretz Israel. What's the connection between them? Okay. So I saw a beautiful commentary that brought by the Shalak Kadosh, Rabbi Yeshua Levi Horowitz. Rabbi Yeshua Levi Horowitz born in a city of Prague in Poland. He born around 466 years ago. And said the Shalak Kadosh, he asked that question, what's the connection? And he explained like this. He said that you have to understand the same like the land of Eretz Israel is holy, okay? The far, the fourth fathers that you have, they was holy. The fourth fathers, okay, they merit to inherit the land of Eretz Israel because they was holy. And if you, Has Shalom, not gonna keep that covenant of being holy, you're gonna lose the land of Eretz Israel. Say the Shalak Kadosh. It's come to tell you that here a Kadosh Baruch Hu tell you that if we keep the holiness, if we keep the mitzvot, and we not has the shalom do averot in the land of Eretz Israel, we can inherit the land. But has the shalom if people do averot, if people doesn't absorb the mitzvot, he told you, remember the covenant that I have with your forefathers, okay, the day was holy. And you decide to break that holiness, you're gonna lose now the land of Eretz Israel and you're gonna go to exile. Okay, so that's one understanding. What's the connection between the covenant of Abraham Avinu, Ishak and Yaakov, to the land of Eretz Israel? That means in the merit of absorbing the mitzvot, we have the right to be in the land of Eretz Israel. But still, we have second question. How come that the order that the Kadosh Baruch Hu tell us here regarding the covenant, he first mentioned Yaakov, then he mentioned Ishak, and Abraham last. Because we know Abraham was the first father that we have, then Ishak, then Yaakov. Why is that? I saw a beautiful commentary, Rabotai, that the Mefarshim explained, and I have to share it with you. And I'm sure that this question appeared to you when you're davening, because we mentioned it on the davening. V'zacharti et briti Yaakov, v'avit briti Yitzhak, v'avit briti Avraham. The commentary explained like this. First of all, let's understand what's the character trait of each one of our father. And they say, Avraham Avinu, what was his character trait? Hesed. Hesed is kindness. Avraham Avinu, no, well known for his kindness. What was the character trait of its Haq Avinu? Mefarshim said, we know Gvura. Gvura, that it means Avodah Shebalev, davening. Okay, when he daven, he daven with full kavana. Okay, and he worship Akadosh Baruch Hu with fear of heaven. Okay, you have the fear of heaven. Yaakov Avinu, what was his character trait? Hazal say Ishtam Yoshev Walim. What it mean, Ishtam Yoshev Walim? The character trait that Yaakov Avinu had studying Torah. Yaakov Avinu all of his life studied Torah. Said the Mepharshim something extraordinary. He said, from here the Torah come to tell you that from all the character trait that our forefather had, Akadosh Baruch Hu chose first who? Yaakov Avin. Why he chose Yaakov Avin? It's come to tell you the Talmud Torah keneget kulam. We say it every morning. What it means, the Talmud Torah keneget kulam? It's come to tell you that Akadosh Baruch Hu, from all the character trait that our forefathers had, he prefer studying Torah. When a person sit and study Torah and he focus on studying Torah, that's what Akadosh Baruch Hu loved the best. That means Akadosh Baruch Hu, the main reason that the Torah wrote first the covenant of Yaakov, then the covenant of Yitzhak, 
then the covenant of Abraham, it's to tell you from all the character trait of the forefathers, Akadosh Baruch Hu preferred the character trait of Yaakov Avinu. Why? Because that was Talmud Torah. I know that Abraham Avinu brought the chesed to the world, the kindness to the world. I know that it's Hak Avinu when he worshiped Akadosh Baruch Hu, he worshiped with fear of heaven and Davin with Kavana, Avodash Balev, say Akadosh Baruch Hu, I prefer one character trait. The Talmud Torah can get I prefer when people study Torah. And by Ezrat Hashem, that Akadosh Baruch Hu will merit all of us to study Torah, to teach Torah, and to pass on. This Torah that we learn today, if you pass one of this shiur, one of those commentary on Shabbos, on a table, or to other people, that's called Limut Torah. To tell Hidushim, there is nothing like that. And that's what the Torah tried to teach us here. What is the idea? And Dafka with that, I decide to end that the Limut Torah is the highest level that Akadosh Baruch Hu loved. Nahon Akadosh Baruch Hu wants you to observe his mitzvot, there's no question. And that's the Hesed, like Abraham Avinu done Hesed. Akadosh Baruch Hu wants you to study Torah, okay? More than anything, even more, okay, than the Daven. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that Akadosh Baruch Hu said, no, I don't want you to do Hesed, I don't want you to do, okay, Davening with Kavana. Not at all, Has Shalom. But he, the highest level, what make giving him the most pleasure, the most enjoyment, when his kids studying Torah. The Talmud Torah, Keneged Kula. Be'ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give us the strength, the power, okay? The health and the brain to study Torah, to teach Torah, and then he will send us Mashiach. He can speedily in our day, Amen, can you hear us on? If there is any question regarding the Shaul, especially make it short, because I know that there is a, a load shedding I don't want to keep you too long. Maybe the wife needs you. Maybe you need to do something. I made the show exactly Hello? for today. Yes, Bechavod. Bechavod, Iva. Uh, it's Anthony. How are you? Anthony, sorry. How are you, Anthony? All right, thanks. The curses are in this week's Torah portion. Why are they written softly by the liner? And why are they said softly? First of all, why are they said softly? <laughs> okay, so you asked first question why they softly, and what's the second thing that you ask? No, that's the only one really. I think that's the only question. Uh, why, why are they softly? Okay, because it's a commentary, first of all, it's a custom, not commentary. It's a custom that the Baal Koret, when he read the commentary on the Torah, First of all, he read them a bit faster and quieter because not the, the people that hear the curses, not so happy to hear. People don't love to hear curses. People don't love to hear bad things. So that's the reason that he said softly on the shot of the Dvarim, okay? Because, and also just remember, not people, not many people will take the privilege and the honor to go in a klalot. I know that Hazal tell us that those klalot, they're actually not klalot, they're not curses, they're actually blessing, the brachot. But many people are afraid to take this aliyah, so you always see that they give the aliyah to someone that or is a, or is a chairman of the shul or the Baal Kor himself. Why? Because people are scared. There's nothing to be scared. Our Torah is not curses. Our Torah tell us in Behokotai Telehu, if you should absorb the law, if you want peace in your land, Rabotai, and that's applicable to what happening to us now in Eretz Israel, if we need peace, not only in Eretz Israel, all over the world. You want to sleep at night without worried? In Behokotai Telehu, if you keep my law. 
ונתתי גשמכם בעיתם. I will give you the rain on his time. What does it mean rain? Parnasa, prosperity. You want help? Absorb the mitzvot. You want wealth? Absorb the mitzvot. You want peace in the land? Absorb the mitzvot. HaKadosh Baruch Hu given us the remedy for a beautiful life. Absorb the law of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the people, now I'm going back to you, Anthony, that people are afraid. Yes, they're afraid to hear it. It's scary, but it's not curses. Has v'shalom. So, but people don't love to hear strong thing, you know? So the Baal Kore festival said softly, and he a bit move on it. When I say move, he read it a bit faster. Beseder, Anthony? That's the reason okay. behind it. Thank you very much. I understand it. Thanks very much. And it's also read Please. twice a year, right? It's read twice no. a year. We read it in Parashat. Kitavo el Aretz. Kitavo el Aretz. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Pleasure. 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 Thank you very, very much. Mark, you wanted to ask something? No, no. I'm good. Thanks, Rob. Okay. I see that. Oh, Jeffrey, you with us? Yes, I've been with you, Rob. I was just delayed a bit with the shutdown of the lights, and we had a few headaches. All sorted okay. out. Sorry, man. Oh, to deal oh, with oh, oh, uh, oh, thank you. Rob, um, the, we were talking about the Vav and the increasing. Each one, each, each um, decree, okay. and all just says, and, and, and. And um, it is... Basically, you say it's for the world, it's showing it's to the world to come. So what you're doing in this world? No, it's... no, the mitzvot. No, the mitzvot that we're doing in this world, what yes. we get, it's just a bonus. The yes. real rewards yes. is for the world to come. But you have to understand that in a world to come, once the, when a person die, when a person die, he can't do any mitzvot. In a world to come, a person can't have to do mitzvot. So how does he get rewards? How does he get rewards? By that, that the mitzvah that he done in this world, he can take the benefit, okay? The dividend for the world to come. From the mitzvah that he done in this world, all the rewards going for the world to come. But say that, that's the vow. Yeah, yeah yes, I, I hear you. But the word and is, is almost mm -hmm. like saying to us, you do this, that be so much reward. And you do more, and you do more, and the more you get a greater share in the world to come. Is that the, is that the message? If you exactly. do- Exactly. The, the, as much as you do more with both. Let me, let me give you an analogy for you to understand. You know, lehavdi lehavdi a hundred times, okay? We go both to uh, uh, a soccer game. Let's take soccer game, that everyone can be used to. There is different, in, 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 in a stadium, there's different seating. As much that you sit higher in a stadium, you hardly see the players. You agree with me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. As much that you sit lower down, close to the field, you can see the game better. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes. Okay. Well, you see the players so, better. Sorry? Sorry? You see the players better, but the higher up you see the overall picture. Yeah, but you see them like like little like little yeah. ants running. Yeah, on the field. Ends. yeah. Okay. Say Akadosh Baruch as much that you do more mitzvot, you become closer to me. Okay. Give you a different analogy. You in the music, you was in a band. You used to have a band. When you play on a band, okay, and you on top of the the, the the ramp and everyone see you who's seeing you better those that right at the back or those that right on the front those that right in the front am i right jeffrey Correct. yeah say i those both as much that you do more mitzvot okay as much that you learn torah you'll have a chance to be much closer to me right on the front to enjoy my divine. So as much that you do more and more mitzvot, all of that, 
I'm banking it for you where? For the world to come. Akadosh Baruch Hu will bank all of those mitzvot for the world to come. You understand? Why? Yes. So you can be close to me, so you can enjoy the Torah that you're going to learn, and you understand with a different level. Those that are sitting at the right at the back, yes, they hear the music, but they don't see the band properly. They don't see the real action. You understand what I'm saying now? Yes, yes. I hope that yes. I've given the right analogy. It is good. One other thing, Rob. Um, Hashem will be with us as long as there's Sadiqim in that place and, and, and keep it holy by studying and being there. Hashem will be with us. That's what you're saying. Well, you gave examples of Eastern Europe. I give it, we can give examples right here. Zimbabwe, when the Jews left and all the learned people left. It's total in ruins. All, all the brochers and the mitzvahs went with them. As you quite rightly said earlier, that's what happens. What is happening in South Africa? It's gone, 40% of our population left us in 1994. And, and a lot of them took a lot of mitzvahs with them. And here we are, but however, we have a, a wonderful kahila, a wonderful people here. They are learning, they are, people are spreading Torah. So it's got to a certain level. So it gives us a lot of comfort to know that we've still got mitzvahs flowing and there could be a revival. There could be a resuscitation. There could be something good still ahead of us in this country. This is what I'm getting from this, Rob. Okay, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I, I have the video, person. Okay, whereby the, the Rebbe, for the Chabad, the last Rebbe, in 1994, Kopol Bacha, I asked him, I spoke to him, person, and I said to him, Kopol, is it true that you gone to the Rebbe in 1994? He said, true, and I'll send you the video. And Rabotai, I have the video. Maybe I should send it on a group that each one of you will see. And the answer of the Rebbe to Kopol Bacha was like this. Kopol, tell the Jewish jury, the Jewish community in South Africa. Listen what he said. Tell them it will be good for them until Mashiach come. And after Mashiach come, it will be even better. And they have nothing to worry. I'm actually going to post that video later on today, Be'ezrat Hashem, if I'm not going to forget, Blin Eder, on a group. I want you all to see that. To give a hizuk to everyone, yes. that a great, a great scholar person like the Rebbe, we don't understand what was the Rebbe. Just, just a little bit for you to, to understand who was the Rebbe, the Rebbe, just, just like this, just to feel it. The Rebbe used to speak, I had the book in my house, he used to speak with Araf Kaduri. Araf Kaduri, Tzhak Kaduri was a great Kabbalistic Rebbe. He passed away, obviously. He was the Skanam Kubalim, the oldest Mekubal that was. Listen what he said. He used to speak with him telepathy. Araf Kaduri, Jerusalem. Okay? Araf Kaduri, Jerusalem. The Rebbe, Crown Heights, New York, 770. 770. Jerusalem. They're speaking to each other in telepathy. Do we understand who was the Rebbe? He was a, a great Kabbalist. And if the Rebbe say, you know what he said. You know, two months ago I asked my, my Rebbe, should I leave the country or not? He said to me, no. Last week again, I spoke to him. I said, Rebbe, I think maybe it's time for me to leave South Africa to come to move to another place. Negative, you stay in South Africa. So I don't know. I, you know, I have my own rabbi that I consult with him. Everything that I do in Halacha, I have a rabbi. In my studying, I have a rabbi. In spiritual, I have a rabbi. Everything that I do, I go through my rabbis. And if you live with the Semuna and you see the flourishing of studying Torah in this, 
in this community, it's unbelievable. Baruch Hashem. Ken Yirbu. Well, this is such a comfort. Such a comfort. I will be with you, Sada Hashem. I will be with you where you are. So this is wonderful. Thank you. And Be'ezrat Hashem, I will post that video. I will post that video. I will mm. post that so we all can see it. <laughs> okay. Any other question, Rabotai? Any question, Rabotai? Regarding the show? No. Okay. I would like to take the opportunity to wish you all a beautiful Shabbos. I hope that's going to be a very meaning Shabbos when you read Parashat Behar Behukotai. In the meantime, be strong. Don't let electricity let us down. Let's keep the mitzvot. That will bring us better Eskon. Okay? And Akadosh Baruch Hu will have mercy and compassion on us. Oh, man. Have a good night, everyone. It's a good, good night. Good, good night. night. Good night, guys. Laila Tov. Laila Tov, everyone. Laila Tov. Laila Tov. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.